Senate are sending a strong message. They're ready for a potential fight over one of Donald Trump's cabinet nominees, Senator Jeff Sessions as Attorney General. Democratic senators sending a letter to the Republican chairman of the Senate committee that will vet the Attorney General pick, calling for thorough, fair, and open hearings. Senator Chris Coons signed this letter. He joins us now from Capitol Hill. Senator, thanks so much for joining us. There's a lot of news uh, about nominations today, in addition to Jeff Sessions, which we'll get to in a second. But Elaine Chao, which we just heard, will be nominated, we are told, for Secretary of Transportation. And then Tom Price, Republican congressman from Georgia, nominated to head up HHS. I want to focus on Price for a moment, if I can, because a lot of people have noted that he could be the personification of the very overturning of Obamacare. How do you look upon his nomination and what he could do uh, to the Affordable Care Act? Well, I think we need to be looking at all of Trump's nominees for cabinet positions uh, in the way the letter a group of us just sent uh, to Chairman Grassley suggests, with an open mind, but conducting thorough and complete hearings. Uh, it's my hope and expectation uh, that Trump's nominees will get the chance that Merrick Garland never got, which is a chance to fully explain their record, uh, to talk about their policy positions and what they intend to do if confirmed, uh, and to give the American people a chance to understand what it might mean for their health care, uh, if Price is secretary of HHS, what it might mean for their civil liberties, civil rights, for their security, and for our elections uh, if we end up with Senator Sessions as attorney general. Senator, real quick, on Congressman Price, if he is confirmed, in your mind, do you think Obamacare is dead? Well, I think the Republicans have made it blindingly clear that they intend to repeal um, the Affordable Care Act. I think the House has repealed it some 60 times in the last two years. The question is, will they keep Trump's commitment to replace it with something that includes some of the most important consumer protections of Obamacare, uh, preventing discrimination by insurance companies against those with pre-existing conditions, making sure that young people can stay on their parents' insurance policies till they're 26. Uh, President-elect Trump has spoken positively, as have a number of other Republican leaders, about some of the very good things that the Affordable Care Act has done. Um, they've got the votes uh, in the House and Senate uh, using an a arcane procedure to literally ram through a repeal of Obamacare with no Democratic votes. But I think that would be foolish, and I think that would throw tens of millions of Americans off health insurance, and it would make Republicans responsible uh, for the near chaos that would result in many insurance markets and in our health care system. I think the smarter thing to do is to work together to embrace the positives of the Affordable Care Act and to move towards more market mechanisms that obviously Republicans yeah. have championed in its, in its place. The key when you're talking about Obamacare, the key when you're talking about the, the, the confirmation process, maybe a sentence you just said there, they've got the votes. I mean, the Republicans yeah. have got the votes to do just about anything they want to do. So when you write this letter about Jeff Sessions and others and say you're going to ask all these questions and give a thorough vetting, you can ask whatever you want. But you in the Democratic Party at this point, you really can't do anything to block any of these nominations, can you? That's right. What would have to happen is that in one of these confirmation hearings, uh, a nominee uh, would say things or their record would reveal that they held positions that Republicans could not join in supporting. Uh, and because the margin here in the Senate is fairly close, even a few Republicans deciding that one of the nominees for a critical position uh, was not acceptable to them would derail the nomination. But, Senator, isn't also um, a rules change that Democrats put in place could also come back to bite you? I mean, I'm, I don't want to get into the weeds, but Democrats made it much easier that a simple majority can push through presidential nominees. Democrats did it for themselves, and now Republicans can do it as well. That's exactly right. The filibuster no longer acts as an emergency break so on the nomination. That? Uh, I do regret that. Uh, I frankly think many of us will regret that in this Congress uh, because it would have been a terrific um, speed bump, uh, potentially emergency break, uh, to have in our system to slow down the confirmation of extreme nominees. We're instead going to have to depend on the American people, on thorough hearings, and on persuading a number of Republicans in those cases where President-elect Trump might nominate someone who's just too extreme for the American people. I'll remind you that Secretary Clinton won the popular vote and that Democratic right, Senate candidates won more votes. So I don't think Trump has an overwhelming mandate, and I do think Republicans are conscious of that. He's got the White House, though, which, which, which is he something. He's got the bully pulpit, bull, bully pulpit, if I could say it, which is something. Right. And he's using it right now as president-elect, and he's talking about things like flag burning. So if we can, I'd like to get your reaction to his, yeah. his latest you know, tweet, for lack of a better word, today, where he says he thinks there should be some kind of punishment.
for flag burning, whether it be a year of uh, imprisonment or loss of citizenship. Your reaction? Well, President-elect Trump is showing um, that he intends to use the bully pulpit, and in some ways uh, to bully, perhaps, more than to lead. Um, my advice to him would be to put the phone down, stop tweeting, and focus on choosing a Secretary of State and Secretary of Defense, uh, rather than peeling us off into a side fight uh, about whether or not Americans think our flag should be burned. Of course, I think burning the American flag is despicable. Uh, I don't think disrespect to this important symbol of our nation uh, is appropriate. But I support the First Amendment. And the Supreme Court, in decision after decision over many years, has said um, that it is protected free speech, even though appalling, offensive, despicable, uh, for protesters to burn the American flag. And what Donald Trump did all through the primaries and through the general election was by casual tweets or perhaps intentional tweets to deflect our focus from important issues at hand and instead get us arguing about things that he threw into the news for the day. He has succeeded in being the focus of the news many, many days when something else important was going on. Obviously, respecting our nation's most important patriotic symbol, the flag, is important. But we can't do it in a way that violates our basic First Amendment rights. Well, you've got a very busy time ahead of you with confirmation hearings that will yep. definitely be landing your lap, Senator. Thank you for your time. We appreciate it. Thank you, Kate. Thank you. All right. Before he, before he rammed his